Orgasmic Enlightenment, where the sexual and spiritual come together. I'm Kim Anami, and I'm a holistic sex and relationship coach and a vaginal weightlifter. In this show, we explore all things intimate. I believe that our sexual energy is life force, creative energy, and we can use it to shape our worlds, strengthen our relationships, and self-actualize. I blend the most avant-garde information from neuroscience, ancient sexual practices like Tantra and Taoism, to renegade wellness modalities to show you how to create gourmet sex in your lives. Come one, come all. Sacred Waters of Ejaculate In the realm of female orgasms, one of the most sought after, elusive, and magical is the phenomenon of female ejaculation. It is so mysterious that some people still debate whether it even exists, like the Loch Ness Monster. So let's put this to bed right now. Yes, it exists, and yes, every woman can do it. If you have been following my work for any length of time, then you know of the Anami guarantee, which is everyone can. Every sex act, every wondrous and awe-inspiring orgasm that you have ever heard about is available to you. All you need is the right tools. Female ejaculation has been found in texts all over the world, spanning centuries from ancient India and China, in Africa and tribal cultures all over the globe, this experience is nothing new. The only thing that's new is the doubt in its existence. Just like with the jade egg and vaginal strengthening, these are art forms that have been practiced since ancient times. Wild and wise vaginas have been around for a very long time. They just need a revival these days. The symbolism of female ejaculation or squirting, as it's called in the vernacular, is all about the gush and flow. I spoke spoke a few weeks back in my episode on lubrication on how these waters are all about the feminine flow, a woman's ability to slide through life and go with the flow. The Sanskrit word for female ejaculate is amrita, which means food of the gods and nectar, the fountain of youth. And in tantric texts and in ideology, this was thought to be one of the greatest gifts that a woman could bestow upon her lover was the gift of her ejaculate. So how amazing is that? <laughs> like, I've been saying for years that I believe all the references to the fountain of youth are actually talking about our sexual energy. It's not some physical location with a stone sculpture and water spewing out of it. It's our genitals with all of their waters and wisdoms flowing out of them. So I've looked at some of these ancient texts and it's so obvious when you have this lens, right? So for example, I've seen passages talking about the serpent guarding the waters Hmm. So now you know. In, as I said, tantric texts, this Amrita is considered the ancient gift, the sacred gift that's mined from the depths of the woman. And this is true. For a woman to ejaculate, she needs to be deeply surrendered and full of abandon. She needs to be open. And this fluid is the physical embodiment of that energy. Yes, it's an amazing gift, and I know plenty of women who have strived to ejaculate, and they just couldn't until they let go of the reservoir that was dammed up inside of them. So I will give you an example. Karina and Molly were an incredible, beautiful couple who came to my Bali retreat some years ago. One of her big goals was to squirt and to have G-spot orgasms, and she hadn't had either yet. So those are noble goals and very achievable ones, at least in the Anami land. And one of the key pillars in the Anami philosophy is the idea of clearing space or what I call relationship feng shui. This means that you have a constant flow of communication between you. You talk, you express, you bring your emotions out into the open. You say what you really think and feel. So this keeps the space between you clear. If you have the kind of relationship that most people have, you don't do this. Instead, you live by don't ask, don't tell, and a life of perpetual white and more serious lies. This becomes normal. And so the flow, the energetic flow between you stops. It's all blocked up with your lies and your half-truths and your hiding. Not very fuckable. <laughs> you are cock-blocking each other. But this just gets chalked up to the inevitable demise of the relationship that people have come to accept as normal. 
It's not. <laughs> it's the product of this turning away. So I say all of that to wind it back to Karina and Molly and her quest to ejaculate. And on the retreats, I get people to do this work of relationship feng shui. Everyone thinks it's all champagne and blowjobs. Shh. <laughs> but there's more to it than that to cultivate gourmet sex. So people come to class and then I send them away with home play. Some of it sexual and some of it is emotional. So early in the week, I sent Karina and Molly and everyone else away to do their deep heart to heart block clearing home play. They came back the next day and then the topic of that day was all about female G-spots and squirting. Then everyone <laughs> went back to their villas and dutifully did that home play. But Karina and Molly didn't have much success with any of this G-spot or ejaculation stuff and so they stepped back and they returned to their unfinished business from the day before. They'd opened up these emotional conversations on that first night and they hadn't quite finished it, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff for people. Obviously, the longer they've been together, there can be more to clear, especially when they're not living by what I call a clean-as-you-go policy, right? All of these things become dammed up and they create obstruction in the space. So they stayed up until I think about 1 a.m. that night and they put that stuff to bed. And then in the morning, they tried their hands again, haha, at her G-spot. And she came all over the sheets and the floor and his hands and his face. She gushed all over the place. She laughed and she screamed and she laughed and she gushed some more. There was a lot in there that needed to come out. So she had opened up the release valve and out it came. Despite hours and years of trying in the past, the magic key to her rivers of ejaculate wasn't the hand stroke, though I did give them some tips, but the fact that she cleared the way first. They got in there, elbows deep into the muck and the mire of their relationship. They sloshed through the mud and they kept at it until they came clean. And in that purification, everything came tumbling out. All of the deeper vaginal orgasms, including ejaculation, are the product of this. If you build it, they will come. If you clear it, they will come. When the couple and the vagina are open and free and undefended, all the things happen. All right, to tell you more, I have Dina with us today as this week's well-fucked all-star. She has done my salons, worked with the Jade Egg, and has had experiences that include shooting ejaculate up over her husband's head. Well fucked all stars. Welcome Dina. It is fantastic to have you here. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. So let me just set this up for everybody. I had put a post up on Instagram, as I do, that was talking about lubrication and the pillars of the Anami philosophy, which are that all women can, despite their circumstances or their age, what have you. And someone piped up in the comments to say, really? Age has nothing to do with natural lubrication? And I said, that's right. And then Dina came along and was like, nope, not a zero zilch. I am 57 and having all kinds of orgasms now, clitoral G-spot with ejaculate of tsunamic proportions. And yes, even cervical orgasms, which are pure nirvana. So Dina has been in my Anami salon. She's worked with the Jade Egg and I wanted to talk and have her share her journey because the whole point of these stories is to really show people that despite their circumstances or despite very common beliefs or mythology around sexuality and limiting beliefs around it, my whole purpose is to blast these things out of existence and show people what's really possible. So Dina, I would love for you to share your story and where you were before and then how you came to be where you are now as this wonderful, well-fucked all-star. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. And um, I really, I, I got to, this is not, I don't mean to sound like a, you know, I'm blowing, you know, air up your skirt or anything here, but it really was for finding you, Kim. If it wasn't for you, I would not be where I am today because um, <sighs> there are pathways to, to figuring all this stuff out and working it out. And um, the way, the way your salons work, they are so beautifully and brilliantly mapped out 
Um, it's, I just think for me, if you really surrender and, and do everything that you say, there's no way you can't get to these places. And, and the biggest part of it is really about surrendering and putting your ego aside and, and, um, you know, don't tell yourself that you know everything and to really surrender to even the things that are very uncomfortable, um, and that, yes, you can get there. And at 57, I'm having crazy sex. I'm living a completely different life now than I am just from maybe four to six months ago. That's with all of this. amazing to hear. And I love, I mean, you're really prefacing this with the idea of simply having an open mind and trying, to, and that's where I usually start with people is educating them about what's possible, right? So rather than people buying into a certain narrative and a really big one for women is around age, things connected to so-called menopause like libido and yes. their mm-hmm. orgasm ability and their lubrication, of it. like lubrication is a really, really big one for quote, women yes. of a certain mm-hmm age right and yeah that, it was for myth, me right and that myth is really mm-hmm. perpetuated by the allopathic medical profession who stands to gain financially by women buying into that story so you you were someone it sounds like who believed that narrative and then somehow <laughs> perhaps trusted or dared to believe that there might be another truth and then gave yourself over to the suggestions that we go through in the different salons and came out the other side. So tell us a bit about that journey for you. I'll start with, uh, I'm going to start um, w- uh, with my upbringing. And um, I was raised in an Italian Catholic, um, very overbearing mother, um, a lot of abuse, a lot of mental, spiritual, physical abuse. There was a lot of rage in my house with both of my parents and uh you know a lot of um, messaging of you know especially with the italian catholic you know good girls don't you're not supposed to enjoy sex you only do it to please your husband that kind of stuff other messaging like you know sex is bad save it for the one you love right that kind of very bipolar um, messaging um and I grew up with all of these very bad ideas about sex. And I also, um, at a young age, about the age of four, I, I, I have my first memory of sexual abuse at the age of four. Mm-hmm. And um, so these things had very much affected me and my outlook in life and how I was raised. And I see that um, how it very much affected me. Uh, throughout my life with every single solitary relationship I've ever had um, and the hurt and the pain that that these things have caused me because I have never been able to get to the root problem or the root issue really of what was going on even though I've had therapy in the past and it was very very good for me we never really got to the deep deep depths of like what we do with this kind of work and Um, I will say this, that yes, it is a lot faster than uh, traditional therapy and buckle up because it can get hairy. So when Um, you say this, do you mean this deliberate, conscious, sexual self-examination, right? Like diving into our sexual selves and potential, the demons that lurk there. Yeah. Rather than more traditional talking therapy. Right. Exactly. So, um, uh, you know, I had a lot of abuse by my mother. So there was a lot of stuff about womanly stuff that I got a lot of mixed messages about how women were supposed to be and even how men were supposed to be. And, um, eventually got married. And, um, when I got married, I, I never enjoyed sex. It was something I just did really as, as sometimes as a manipulation for men to get what I wanted or this is what I thought I was supposed to do, but I never really, and I couldn't understand because everybody else seemed to really love sex and I didn't get it at all because it was not fun for me. And when I got married, I I had to be drunk, drunk Mm -hmm. in order to have sex because I couldn't handle what was happening with my body. I couldn't, I couldn't be in my body emotionally and be present uh, and 
with what was happening to me. I had to check out just to get through it. And I'll just say that that's very common for people who've had a past of sexual abuse that hasn't really been resolved or healed. And yes. they need to use substances to have sex or yes. their body puts mm-hmm. up blocks to have sex. They might have constant yeast infections or the yes. whole range mm-hmm. of issues that I term loosely Volvo bullshitia, which is when the allopathic profession can't pinpoint what it is or how to help it and they just give it some random name right where like for example vagina on lockdown where a woman her vagina is actually tightly shut and feels like it won't open or has severe pain with intercourse right these are all messages from the body that are saying you know I'm not opening up until you heal and examine what's here so your version of that of you know needing to be dissociated through substances alcohol fits that same story Yes. I mean, I, there was times I would vomit. Wow. I would vomit. Okay. Wow. And it was then I was like, you know, this, this isn't right because why does everybody seem to love sex, but I'm vomiting and have to be drunk. Like there was a part, I, I got to a point where hmm, maybe I should look at this. And it was actually a next door neighbor of mine who said to me, Dana, why don't you go to, Dana, why don't you go to therapy? And I was like, I can't go to therapy. That's for people with problems. Right. Okay. So I was in my early, right. I was in my, because that's what you think. I mean, you just think these are the weirdest people, the people with real problems go to right. therapy. Right. And she said, um, do you know what therapy is? And I said, well, no. And she says, all you're doing is you just sit with someone and talk. All you do is talk. And I said, oh, I can do that. And I went to therapy and I, and I um, found this gal and she was very in her feminine and she helped me a lot. And she was the one who helped me to get to the point where I could have um, clitoral orgasms. And then a whole, I felt like Jasmine of Aladdin. It was a all suddenly it was a whole new world. I'm flying around on a carpet. I'm having, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and this was awesome because, you know, I'm not throwing up anymore and I'm not having to be drunk all the time, but at the same time, it still wasn't fabulous. It wasn't great. I still wasn't completely engaged in the act. I still was somewhere, you know, dissociated, distancing. I, I never could, could completely give myself over to someone. I could never completely say, here I am in all of my glory. I, there was there was walls and all kinds of blocks up. When I heard you speak and talk about all of this, healing yourself through sex, through sex, through having sex, that this is how you actually get healed, as much as that absolutely blew my mind that you turn towards the thing that you're absolutely right. running from and embrace at the same time, I went, oh, my God, this makes so much sense. Of course. Of course. So I got your jade egg and I bought the luscious elixirs and, you know, started working on that. Well, I often say when people ask me, and I, I was sharing with you earlier that I did an interview yesterday and I said, you know, people might think that my favorite thing about sex is the pleasure and the bliss and the ecstasy, right? And I'm like, mm, no. actually, it's the orgasmic no. enlightenment. It's the self-actualization. <laughs> it's the transformation yes. and altering. It's the and, gift that keeps on giving. Right. The expansion of my state of consciousness. That's my favorite thing about sex, or at least the way that I have sex and the way that that I aim to show others how to have sex, which is this way of expanding and opening and deepening our state of consciousness. And sure, there's a lot of ecstasy and bliss that goes along with that, no doubt. But for me, that's not the primary objective. The primary objective is really these deeper experiences and awarenesses and the sense that I'm being changed and bettered as a person. Yes, and yes. So that's the real, to me, the real juice. So, so let's say, um, is there anything else you wanted to finish off with on that? Yes. Topic? So when I had my first cervical orgasm and I, um, had this wave, um, it was like a tsunami, like I said, this energy of, of this emotion that came over me. And then I had another wave that literally pushed my body up forward. I might literally, my body came up 
and forward. And then I rolled to my side and I started crying. I started sobbing for about 20 to 22 minutes, my husband said. And uh, when all was said and done, this is where it gets crazy. I got up to go use the restroom and clean myself up. And I turned around. It was that clear, absolute bright um, where everything was so crystal clear. But the bedroom and my husband shrunk down very, very small. Like he looked like he was three inches in the bed. The bed looked six inches, the room like it was. And I felt like this big, huge 12 foot being stuck in this room. I don't mean like crowding, like uncomfortable. I felt like fucking Wonder Woman with my hands on my hips. And there was a cape on me blowing in the wind. Amazing. Um, like I felt, I, I felt huge in the most brilliant way. Like just like I could, there wasn't anything I couldn't do kind of a thing. But it, it, what was bizarre is that how small everything else looked and how big and bright. It was very strange. Okay. Well, yeah. I love hearing these things because I'm forever talking about the power that is between our legs and the power that's literally at our fingertips, right? And how there is what I see as this concerted, deliberate effort to r remove people from this notion that they actually have this power, right? We see this energy and theme perpetuated through allopathic medicine and through our culture in general that you don't have the power, somebody else has the power. You can't heal yourself, somebody else or something else has to heal you. And my belief, Absolutely. and I've talked about this in my Censorship of Sex podcast episode, is that the censorship has been a very deliberate distortion of what the energy of sex really is and can do. And the things that you're describing are really amazing examples of this power this interdimensional power you know which really that's what sex is right it's the bridge between the doorway between life and death between other dimensions um that we have access to when we consciously then are able to access this power and these portals you're teaching us to you know we're just starting to you know get in touch with our body and feel our bodies and get to know ourselves and, you know, start doing that kind of deep reconnaissance work that we used to say, you know, get in there with your fingers and start learning your vagina. And like some of these things, like when I heard you say that, it was like, I mean, of course I've had my fingers in my vagina, but I never did that deep. And then it was like, well, why didn't I? Like the, after I did, after I heard you say it, it was like, duh, but it would have never occurred to me to do that. Right. So start doing that work and you know we have to start doing self-pleasuring and you want us to you know um, get off of using the vibrator and all that kind of stuff on the clitoris and I would and I tell my husband you know when I go to masturbate now I go in the other room and I tell him I'm going to church I'll say I'm going to church <laughs> and he'll go okay because that's where I go pray at the altar of my vagina now beautiful and uh now, I'm still having G-spots with my husband with massive ejaculate, okay? I mean, we're talking like shooting over him head, going way past the bed, that kind of stuff, okay? It's a, because it's like oxygen for me now. And there was another time that it, I wasn't even able to masturbate for like three weeks, and it finally hit me, oh, my God, you have masturbated. I finally went back, back in and did my thing, and I had such a massive G-spot orgasm. Um, I should have had like plastic up on all the walls. It was like that. But I felt like I had a full body <laughs> chiropractic adjustment after that. So but then when I do that, now I go in and have these orgasms. And I have these massive orgasms with this massive ejaculate now. And I'm telling you from start to from absolute start to absolute finish, it's about 10 minutes. I can, I can do it in about 10 minutes. That's fantastic. So what is, do you think, the ejaculate? Do you see any kind of parallel between the ejaculate and your outer life, right? Like I often like an ejaculate and female fluids to a sense of flow in our outer lives. Is there anything you would say about that? I absolutely would say about that because I feel like with every orgasm, every time you have those wonderful releases and because there's something that I want to say too about this, you know, there's spiritual mysteries of the body. Like we know your tears are coded, you know, emotions are coded that are good trapped. Like you say, the nodules and the things that can get trapped, cysts, all of this, these things. I believe that even ejaculate is coded. 
Like when we have a jacket that comes out, it's coated with with things that tell stories of of what's happened to us and what we're releasing and what we're letting go and the even the beautiful the things that are coming out. And uh, Kim, you know, before all this, I mean, I would I would cry every day, every day, not like a little bit of crying, every day crying, crying, crying. And I don't cry every day anymore at all. So my body's having release with with the um, with the ejaculate, and I feel like the more and the more I have these orgasms, and the more of this ejaculate, I'm working more of this house, and it does you, it puts you in the in the, not just in the flow of life, but it's like um, you you start to understand and see how everything there's hope and there's and you can let go and everything starts to go and you don't have the worry of how am I going to control this? Or I'm so scared of that. You, you just kind of let go and everything is free and easy and things start to, Oh, come to you. Things start coming to you massively. Um, Tell me about the that. other big thing that I've been, well, um, I feel very much that, you know, with as messed up as I was emotionally and completely shut off and detached from life in every way. I didn't even realize how much. And the more and the more I do this work and with every orgasm and every time I journal and tap and do all these things and get to know myself and work through this stuff a little bit more. Um, I used to, when I was, from the time I was 15, I started getting premonitions and um, up and until my 30s, and then I stopped having premonitions. I'm sure you can guess why, because I, you know, when you're closed off and having a lot of bad things happen, you don't get messages anymore. Well, what started happening with me is, um, and things how, you know, when you can talk to the universe or think about one thing, and then the next day, here's the answer. It's all of that stuff is coming to me, like, like I'm on this information superhighway. Um, with what just, I mean, I can barely even, I barely will have a thought about something and I'm not kidding you. The answer will come to me. Boom. Here you go. Just right. like that. Connected. Here you go. Open. Connected. Very, very connected, very open. And that's been very, very exciting to me. Um, and just the letting go of, um, really letting go and surrendering to life. The, it's like the more you have these orgasms, the more you can surrender to life and then let more in. Yeah, exactly. The journey to getting there, that yes. level of surrender and opening and trust that's required to get there, the price of admission for these orgasms, a level of courage, then carries out yes. into our outer life. Absolutely. Yeah, and at 56, you know, just never thinking that my body could ever work like that, ever, never, no way. And then at 56 to have these things going and then at 57 to be having these major massive, um, it's very, very exciting. So what role do you think that the jade egg played in your process? Oh, I think the jade egg is huge, huge because um, it is this, it's the absolute strengthening of those walls. And I believe that that egg talks to the cervix too, because I had mm. an experience with the jade egg where literally my husband slipped it in my, in my, in my vagina one day. And I literally just was looked at him and I said, Bill, and I was crying. I said, I don't know what just happened. That jade egg just touched my cervix. I'm bawling. Wow. I didn't have an orgasm or anything. But it was like the energy. I mean, there's just so much that happens with it. But that jade egg is what gives you, um, it kind of gives your vagina the strength to do the work and figure it out in a way. It's the, it's the pendulum of energy. Like, I don't know how to say it, but it's... Catalyst. Um, it's the catalyst. Yeah. It's the catalyst. Activates. That's the word. Yeah. Activates. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. The jade egg is um, that jade egg is your best friend. I agree that rather than lube being a girl's best friend, the jade egg is actually the girl's best friend. The, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for people who are at any age, and I think you know your experiences of the orgasmic 
mastery and I love the stories of your absolutely prolific and tsunami ejaculate, what advice would you give people, especially if they're at a certain age where they're told that these things are elusive or maybe even impossible for them, what would you have to say to them? I would say don't, don't, first of all, don't believe it because it's, it's absolute, it's, it's bullshit lies and you got to fight for your life, fight for your happiness. You know, no mud, no Lotus, (laughs) no mud, Uh no mud, no mud, no Lotus. And you got to get, you got to get close. Your, Your blocks are your actual best friends. That's the, that was the other biggest thing for me is that, you know, don't be afraid of your blocks. Don't, you know, talking about the mud, hold your nose, take a deep breath and go swim in your mud because how you get clean, how you come out on the other side of that is, is getting that mud all over you and, and, um, wrapping your arms around it. That's how you get there. That's how you have these orgasms. That's how you have that, these, uh, the ejaculate that goes with it and all these amazing um, seeing and touching the face of God and, and hearing music now. I mean, it's like insane. It's so beautiful. And I love that analogy of the mud because when we actually from a therapeutic perspective, put on mud on the skin or clay, it's this, it's acting to pull out, to draw out toxins, exactly. right? And uh-huh. then leave us in a cleansed state, more of a purified state, a restored state. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, don't run from your blocks, even though I would tell you it can be scary, but hang on and stay the course. You, you got to fight for your life. You, you, you got to fight. You got to fight for your happiness. And if you had told me to stand on my head and spit nickels, I would have done it. To get out of it. Like because you were willing to try to, anything. I, to, yes, yes. That's where I was. I was absolutely, you know, at, I had hit rock bottom. And um, as, as hard as this work can be at times, I mean, at the same time, it's just so much fun too. I mean, there's... <laughs> I think it's fun. Yeah, I think you know, that's great um, and very, very, very rewarding. You know, you get to learn about things about yourself that you just never knew, you know. Beautiful. So, Anything else yeah. that you'd like to add? Beautiful. You Thank can do you. it. It's there. Yes. Anyone can. That's the Anami guarantee. Anyone can. Anyone can it. at any stage of their lives. Anyone can. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much, Dina. You're welcome. Thank you, Kim. You can learn about all things ejaculation and vaginal power in my Vaginal Kung Fu salon. The salon is now open. Registration closes on February the 12th at midnight PST. This is your ultimate guide to vaginal mastery to fully own and inhabit your sexual power. Go to kimanami.com, look for salons, and then click on Vaginal Kung Fu. This episode was brought to you by the Jade Yoni Egg. This is the premier tool on the market for all things super pussy because yes, it is normal to have a lubricating, orgasming, and ejaculating vagina every day of the week. Side effects of the Jade Egg include multiple orgasms, vaginal orgasms, ejaculatory orgasms, increased lubrication, increased libido, and easier childbirth and faster recovery, ecstatic pleasure and sensation, boosted self-confidence, the reversal of urinary incontinence, easier periods, PMS, and menopause. The life-changing magical Jade Egg is found at kimonami.com under Vaginal Kung Fu and at the Anami Alchemia online shop.